Hey, welcome back, knife nerds and everyday care people. It's your boy, the Big Connector, and I am back. Tickled pink to be in front of the cameras here again. Took a week off, had some in-laws in town for the week, and um, I imagine the nerve of those people using my uh, Big Connector Studios as a bedroom. Damn it. Well, that's what ended up happening. I had to give them their own little space, and I am just tickled pink to be back in front, and we are going to have a look at a very, very interesting knife here. This bugger right here. This is here is a John Gray, Kaiser John Gray GPB1. And uh, another thing here too, I got to talk about this. This knife is for sale. This knife here is, uh, if you would like to take this, I mean, this knife here is uh, almost, it, it, it's it basically, it's brand new. And uh, just a quick, uh, quick shout out for you guys here in, uh, as my, um, I guess, you know, loyal subscribers, you guys can get this for $200 shipped to you anywhere in Canada, or if you're in the States, 200 plus shipping. Uh, and let's, uh, we'll go over this here too as well. This is a fantastic knife. It is an absolute brute. Um, it, not only is, uh, you're going to get yourself a fantastic knife, you're going to get yourself a big Kanucker KME uh, edge that will cut time and space. Cutting time and space is a very, very tough thing to do. And uh, with this bugger, you can do it. So let's head to the tabletop and let's check this out. All right. Here we go. And of course, it comes with uh, the Kaiser uh, accoutrement, which is, you know, it's got the uh, the Kaiser, uh, um, you know, the papers that go with it, you know, taking care of it, where it came from. And I really like the fact that Kaiser has got this nice little carrying case to it too as well. And it comes with a Kaiser um, cleaning cloth. I, I just, even though these are probably not the most expensive cleaning cloths and cases and stuff like that, I wish the other big guys, you know, Spyderco would, uh, you know, some of their higher end knives, I wish they would come with stuff like this because it just adds to the overall enjoyment of the knife. All right. So let's have a look at this bugger here right now. And it is, it is a beast, but it is oh so smooth of a beast here let's see if we can clean a little bit of fingerprints off there and let's go with size wise all right size wise here as a comparison you have got yourself a paramilitary two as you can see that you are not giving up really any uh, length to the paramilitary two so if you're used to that size you're going to get it but you're going to get a lot taller blade now if you're looking for really big and beefy here's another one here it is a cold steel 8010 as you can see it's in the company of the cold steel 8010 as far as beefitude um with the blade as well as beefitude with the uh handle too as well so uh you can have a look here and see that the uh the paramilitary 2 has got the same sort of kind of width to it but it just doesn't seem like it is near as as beef as this um uh, GPB one. Now this actually stands for, uh, it is actually stands for Gray's Pocket Brute one. Now it is, uh, built after a custom knife. Uh, now John Gray is a custom knife maker and he makes a knife called a Thuck. All right. Now the Thuck stands for, uh, if I can remember correctly here, Thuck stands for tactical, a uh, hunting utility knife. So that's what the Thuck stands for. And it is a really, really all-purpose, all-around knife. And I normally say, hey, don't pry with knives. But this bugger here is so beefy that <laughs> I think you could be prying some ribs apart if you're cutting apart that uh, big old elk or moose with this. I don't think you'd have any problems, you know, cutting, you know, prying those apart. That's for sure. Because it is a really, really solid, handy knife. Now, the overall length here is eight and a half inches long. Now, the blade length is right perfect ED size, three and a half inches uh, long, too, as well. Now, I don't know what the exact width of it, but the width is, I think, is about an inch and three quarters. So, you do have lots and lots of blade in there, and it is S35VN. Now, it is a, they say it's a hollow grind, but it's a very, very slight hollow. It is still thin behind the edges. Uh, don't get me wrong. This will cut through cardboard really, really quite easily, even with this big blade. Um, it's... It's almost more of a high saber ground. They call it a they call it a, a a hollow grind. I think it's more of a just from the feel of it. I think it's more of a saber grind than it is a a hollow grind. Now, of course, the blade is S thirty five VN. Now, S thirty five VN, according to a lot of knife makers as well as knife guys, is their favorite preferred steel. You get good edge retention. You get good toughness. Good strength. Uh, good stainless uh, capabilities, and it's really quite easy to sharpen. Now, S35VN, if I'm not mistaken, was designed by um, 
crucible particle metallurgy but along with um chris reeve he uh he helped uh, uh develop this steel and you know chris reeve is one of the premier knife makers in all of the world so if he had a hand in it you know that it's good all right <clears throat> now uh the pocket clip here is only comes one way and it is right-handed uh tip up you know sorry to say but uh if you left these out there but it looks like it is a custom clip now uh, if you have a look out there and you look at some of the john gray thucks and you put this side by side this is like almost like a mid tech it's for 200 bucks you are getting yourself one hell of a knife and one hell of a knife that's very close to the original you know 1500 dollars um custom john gray uh, knives themselves now um it is a frame lock and it does have the oval travel and that's here right here and you can see that this big old you know you think it's a phillips and it's not i mean if you get the right the right big monster phillips it will fit in there but this is more designed to fit a dime or a quarter or a nickel in there to do some adjustments on the fly you can see that it does have a, a, a steel insert there so because you're not going to get your titanium uh and steel lock stick too as well uh it is very very uh smooth uh, and it does uh you know it does fly open it, it is a lot of a lot of steel uh that's that's flying out here too as well so and i like these um it doesn't have a stop pin in there what it has is it has two sloped thumb studs that go into the frame and that gives you not only stopping ability but it also gives you some really really good uh stability as far as left and right to you know you're not going to get any sort of wiggle or wobble on this whatsoever um there's still lots of play here to its left i think it's only about a third um it's only about a third uh, uh into the uh the tang here so you've got lots of lots of travel here for this to you know to break in i don't i, I would say that this knife is hardly even broken at all it, it is uh, i've uh, taken i you know i tidied up a little bit and, and i just added a, a few drops of oil and it, it is so beautifully butterfly smooth now it is on the heavier side now it's about 6.85 ounces but it doesn't carry like a you know like some of them knives that weigh your pants down so much that you've got saggy bum these don't seem to this just doesn't seem to 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 carry that and even though the size there's no real um there's no real like like hot spots on it or there's no spots that are snagging you when you're reaching into your pocket so everything is beautifully rounded and chamfered to you know right even the, the the blade itself there's no crazy so if you're going to use this for um for striking a fair cm rod you'd probably want to sharpen these edges up a little bit because they probably wouldn't do a very good job with that because they are so beautifully chamfered they're just it's just a very comfortable knife and it's a the quality and fit and finish that if you know kaiser knives you know that they are very very um uh, uh conscious of their fit and finish the centering here is almost bang on straight uh, i've had no issues with that whatsoever and it's not moved since i've picked up the knife and i've had the knife for about six weeks too as well um let's just have a look here um now if you're going to take this knife home um i think you're going to get yourself an excellent excellent bargain at 200 dollars, you know shipped um i don't think you're you're gonna find yourself a bigger hunk of titanium and s35 in there, out there for the price and I, I think it's just an absolute excellent knife of course it does have the frame lock like or the um, the lanyard like i i totally love and uh if anybody who wants to buy this I will definitely uh, you know throw in this lanyard if not I can take it off no problem so now what would I you know some feelings of this knife here a little bit okay it is very very big now if you're used to carrying you know two ounce or three ounce knives this is going to definitely be a little bit bigger than you normally would carry but if you're looking interested in carrying like you know if you put this in your pocket and you're used to carrying a, a five ounce knife I don't think you're going to notice the difference at all uh, not one bit um, it does take up a lot of real estate as far as this way um, <clears throat> but I mean that's not going to be this is a you know not going to be the knife that you're taking out at your uh, at your office job to open up an envelope because all of a sudden you're going to have uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, John Q. Public screaming you know bloody murder that's another you know thought it is a little bit murdery looking uh, and it looks kind of like a little bit of a like a um, like a uh, like a hatchet so <laughs> it's not um your 
your everyday knife that's going to disappear in your office. This is a great knife for everyday carry, a great knife for hunting. Uh, I would probably give this an 8 out of 10, uh, and, and especially for the money. I think this is a tremendous amount of value, especially if you're a fan of John Gray and you don't have that $1,500 to drop on his John Gray Custom. This is one of the closest uh, production knives that I think that you can get out there, closest to a custom um, that I have seen in, in a few years. So take this home, $200, um, and it is yours. Uh, shipped in Canada, 200 plus shipping. Uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed uh, having a look at this. Now, uh, if you stay tuned to the very, very end, I will give you a little flash of what I've got uh, coming up, and uh, we'll see if anybody can guess what the next uh, knife I'm going to be showing off here is. Uh, I'm just going to give an ever so slightly flash of part of it, and uh, I'd love to hear your uh, thoughts in the description and what you think it is. All right, please, please stay safe out there. Please keep your stick on the ice. The shiny side up. This is the Bacon Hunker. Say adios.